Welcome to this video brought to you by, the Society of Mechanical Ventilation. Modes of Mechanical Ventilation, Adaptive Ventilation Mode 1, and 2. Hello everyone, uh, today we'll talk about a um, mode called, one of the newer modes, called Adaptive Ventilation Mode, or AVM. And you would notice there's AVM1 and the newer one, AVM2, and we'll talk about the difference. So we'll talk about the uh, also the concept of AVM, uh, which is based on the concept of work and power, uh, how to set it, when to use it, and if it has any role um, in weaning too. So when we talk about AVM1, uh, I would encourage you to um, watch uh, another video that we did um, about adaptive support ventilation uh, because AVM1 and adaptive support ventilation are basically same mode um, but in just different manufacturers. So the term adaptive is actually a little bit confusing. Yes, the ventilator adapts. Um, to the respiratory mechanics and try uh, adjust its uh, settings. Um, but if you look at the taxonomy of mechanical ventilation, uh, adaptive modes are modes that um, uh, like pressure regulated volume control, uh, while AVM and ASV are called, uh, are pressure controlled modes with the optimal targeting scheme, uh, meaning like one of those intelligent modes. So AVM1, again, it's not a single mode, but on, uh, almost like three in one. Uh, what does that mean? Mean like when the patient is passive, no effort, the ventilator act, acts as a pressure control mode. Um, if the patient is active, but not fulfilling the whole uh, target respiratory uh, uh, rate, the, uh, the mode almost becomes intermittent mandatory ventilation. And if the patient is targeting all the breaths uh, the, it becomes like almost like a pressure support ventilator. So again, it's no single mode. It's a closed loop intelligent algorithm with optimum targeting scheme. Um, and again, I encourage you to read the taxonomy by Shadburn. Uh, it's based on the Otis equation, uh, which later on was modified by Mead. So Otis Mead equation of the work of breathing. Um, and that's how comes that window here. Uh, it simply says this is the for uh, this is the equation, which is of course is pretty complicated. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, that this is the window to be uh, having the less work of breathing. We either have a ver uh, very big tidal volume with very low respiratory rate, or very shallow uh, breaths with low tidal volume and very high respiratory rate. Um, so the the ventilator uh, monitors also the expiratory time constant to adjust uh, its target respiratory rate and tidal volume to be in that safe zone, which is that square. So it uses that equation. Um, the clinician puts uh, the gender and the height to get an ideal body weight. And the, ventil and the percent uh, target minute ventilation, um, each 100 mil uh, percent equal 100 milliliter per kg of the ideal body weight. So if the ideal body weight here is 61 and you dialed 100%, it will be 6.1 uh, liters per minute. And the ventilator adjusts the, the respiratory rate and the tidal volume to get that ideal uh, minute ventilation. And it usually uses a ratio of one to one. So what is AVM2? Uh, AVM2 is uh, one of the newer uh, modes. That's only uh, on the Bella Vista ventilator from Vier. And uh, yes, it looks like AVM1. It looks like the ASV, same uh, pictures as we'll show. Um, it's also the same uh, closed loop um, uh, algorithm with optimum target scheme. But instead of using the uh, Otis Mead equation for work of breathing, because there was a controversial issue and some research about uh, that the Otis equation was actually uh, developed in spontaneously breathing patients uh, to calculate their work of breathing and they were not intubated and they're using the sinusoidal flow 
well uh, most of those modes now are used in a pressure controlled uh, mode of ventilation with decelerating flow so the issue came of the maybe we should use a better formula to uh, adjust our um, target respiratory rate and um, tidal volume and mid ventilation and that was um, now known as the inspiratory power um, now this is the uh, equation for the res uh, inspiratory power and again pretty mathematical and engineering and complicated i don't think most cl clinicians can decipher this me included um, we'll talk a little bit about the concept of power and work uh, but basically the inspiratory power equal the tidal power plus the resistive uh, power so briefly we'll talk about uh, the concept of work and power uh, and work is in uh, joules power is in joules uh, per minute so here's a couple of uh, examples total work is the whole work generated by the ventilator to deliver the pressure and flow to the respiratory system um, resistive work is the work dissipated as heat in generating flow through the airway resistance elastic work is the work needed to expand the lungs and the chest wall peep work uh, is the work against the peep during inspiration which is temporarily stored as energy within the elastic tissue and later converts to kinetic energy as the gas escapes back to the atmosphere uh, through the exhalation valve so what is tidal work it's the elastic work minus the peep work meaning the work during a breath tidal breath during tidal ventilation uh, or we call it now tidal pressure what's inspiratory work so it would be the sum of the tidal work and the resistive work and the muscle work uh, of, uh, the work generated by the ventilatory muscles of the patient himself so setting for both uh, AVM1 and AVM2 are pretty similar and uh, with the next slide we'll uh, talk about uh, in details a little bit practical how to do it uh, but basically what you have to put is the gender and the height and the ventilator calculates the ideal body weight the clinician has to enter the target percent minute ventilation and uh, as I said before 100% um, meaning 100 milliliter per kg per minute 200 percent will be 200 milliliter per kg per minute and so forth and usually um, the ventilator allows you to choose between 25 to 350 percent although usually um, uh, somewhere between 75 as a low and uh, maybe 150 175 usually hard to see in the extremes uh, above or below that um, the ventilator chooses the target uh, minute ventilation as we talked about uh, the clinician has to enter the peep and of course you have to choose the peep uh, to whatever method that um, you use to choose the peep and that's a different long discussion um, and actually there is a video uh, we have before about peep uh, the pressure limit which is the dashed uh, line where like the ventilator does not uh, go above the pressure there, uh, pressure above that you can choose a trigger whether it's pressure trigger or flow trigger as anything else um, the expiratory trigger so if the patient is spontaneous and it's pressure support mode when to cycle from inhalation to exhalation um, you can also dial that manually usually 25 percent or there is now um, automatic uh, you know, uh, cycling where the ventilator actually choose when to cycle from inhalation to exhalation based on the patient work uh, you have to also choose the rise time how fast the pressure goes again you can set it uh, manually or now there's also automatic where the ventilator adjusts the rise time of course the FIO2 we'll talk about how to set the AVM uh, mode so we'll go to settings here we'll choose AVM we already put uh, the patient's uh, gender and height so we have an ideal body weight here 
it's a uh, male, five feet, nine inches. We'll, for now, we'll start as 100% male ventilation. Of course, you can change this uh, from 25 up to 350%. Uh, um, and again, each 100% um, meaning 100 milliliter per kg. So if our patient ideal body weight 71 kilos, the minute ventilation target 7.1, we have to adjust the PEEP. Uh, we'll have to put the pressure limit, so we'll keep it for now. The trigger, um, whether it's flow trigger or pressure trigger, and the expiratory sensitivity, in, if the patient has spontaneous breathing. Here also the cool thing you can do auto rise like the rise slope uh, whether automatic or manual so we'll start with those settings and we'll see how it goes we'll sh now we'll, um, let's go to the expert monitoring and we'll see the curves here this is the animated long which gives you a compliance this patient we set the compliance of 50 resistance about 10 here it's measuring 8 um, there's no spontaneous breath here um, and this is the window the AVM minute window you notice here that the target is 7.1 liter 100% and the ventilator uh, based on the equation that we described before will try to target um, here that arrow about rate 17 and tidal volume about 418 so let's see what happens uh, when we change the compliance um, mm -hmm. so for first we're just gonna stop ventilation for uh, for a second okay um, I worsened uh, the compliance so let's see um, what's the new settings the ventilator what's the new target uh, would be if you notice here, the red mean became more red, the long became more red, meaning the compliance got worse. And again, it's measuring 27 and the resistance 15. And if you notice here now at the blue arrow, it takes, of course, a couple of seconds for the ventilator to adjust. Um, it wants to target a respiratory rate about, um, if I can see here, about 14. And tidal volume went down to 368. Um, of course I have to set my alarms um, but that's a new one. let's see what happens when we um, change the peep for example so we we'll go here let's go up to peep of 15 and again we'll go back uh, to the expert monitoring because I like this one of course here you can see all the waveforms you can add or whatever says pressure flow volume you can add any other uh, curves you want and this log gives you uh, everything and again so notice when we change the peep now um, the rate is 19 and the tidal volume 371 um, if we go back to change uh, our minute ventilation for example so we can go I'll go to 150 and push apply and again I will go back to the expert monitoring you don't have to go to the expert monitoring but I just like to see uh, what's my target here if you notice now 150 percent so it becomes the minute ventilation target 10.6 liters per minute now the ventilator um, wants about target rate about 24 and tidal volume about 435 and that's simply uh, how to set uh, AVM so what's the clinical use and um, for AVM2 and if uh, um, if there's any ev evidence behind it and for weaning too and to my knowledge there is you can use AVM basically one and two for any clinical scenario, whether it's normal lung, COPD, ARDS. Uh, matter of fact, as you, I'll put it in the reference uh, slide, uh, how comparing uh, AVM2 to AVM actually reduced the mechanical power. 
Um, now in weaning, similar to ASV, um, in, when the patient's totally spontaneously breathing, uh, was, it becomes, as we talked about, it becomes pressure support mode. And uh, there's a lot of studies about ASV and weaning, how it uh, facilitates and uh, cuts the uh, time for weaning. Um, it's practically the same for AVM, uh, although there's no much studies about this, but I'm pretty sure it will be uh, forthcoming, but same concept. Uh, so those are some references I put here, uh, which are really good and worth reading. Uh, one about adaptive mechanical ventilation with automated minimization of mechanical power, pilot crossover study. Uh, and uh, the other one, which is really good to read, is advanced modes of mechanical ventilation and optimal target schemes uh, by uh, uh, Matthias van der Stey and Robert Chapman. And with that, I would say uh, thank you and hope that was uh, helpful. Thank you.